Well, I'm here with uh, Jeremy, known as Big Jez. Uh, we're going to be having a bit of a chat about faith. And so, Jeremy, why don't you just introduce yourself? Cool, Ben. Uh, yeah, so my name is Jeremy Holland. Uh, grown up here my whole entire life. Uh, met and married a wonderful woman called Jessica. And we've now got three lovely kids called Amos, Zoe and Ivy. And yeah, the last few years I've sort of worked in the area as an SSO and currently up at Midlinton District School just supporting kids and teachers in sort of the everyday running of a a day in the life of a school kid. So, yeah, it's been interesting and challenging and just enjoyable. Awesome. Um, where did your faith begin? Uh, so, like, I grew up... My mum, when I was born and all that, was already in church and was this already... Church? Yeah, this church. So, in the old church over in Edithburg, in the, uh, the first church on that site there, um, she was already in, she was sort of well invested in it and had become a believer and my sister was there and all that and so as a very young kid she took me off to school like you know to church and to kids church or Sunday school Um, and then my dad became saved and it was a definite everyone went to church regardless like it was a Sunday morning thing we did it so from a very young age I've been in church and um it was like it as a young kid um Oh, well, what was there not to like? Pajamas and crawling under chairs and sleeping and drawing on the under... There was probably not a pew in that church that didn't have some sort of scribble from me and my mates. Um, so, yeah, like it was just... A, as a kid, it's sort of... It's hard to explain because it, it's a completely different type of community to, say, like a sporting club or or being a part of, like, a, a, an... I don't know, like a dancing club or, or, you know, like even a group of friends who just get together and camp all the time. It, it's a completely different environment. And I never felt weird or scared or afraid of being there. I, I loved it. It was fun. There was always something to do. And everyone was always nice and welcoming. And, you know, like you sort of knew everyone. Like you grew up knowing knowing everyone and they all knew you. And, and even if you never saw them through the week, you're always comfortable with everyone in the church. And yeah, it's like a community, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, really I mean, like it is. And it's, it's like a, it's, it's even, I reckon, a step further than that. I think church comes to be part of your family. The, like, you know, the more, I mean, like, I've, I've been here since I was really young, like baby right up until now. And there's not been many years where I've been not here, where I've had to be in Adelaide or something like that. But yeah, it, it becomes family. Like, you know... I suppose it... Was there a moment where you made a decision saying, yeah, I, I believe this, yeah, I want this in my life, or was it just like a gradual thing over time? Oh, I suppose or a bit of both even, I don't uh, know. Yeah, like, I mean, it, there was a Keith Hounslow thing that happened down here. I reckon it was about five. I saw a whole heap of people getting prayed for and, and things happening, and I didn't quite understand, but I knew I wanted to partake. And so mum took me out, I got prayed for, and I sort of got to speak in the tongues and stuff like that. That sort of came throughout the rest of that year and a bit on. Yeah. Um, I, I'm similar. I can't... Some people say, this is the day I decided yeah. to become a Christian. It, was, it wasn't like that for no, me. No, it wasn't for me It either. was just a gradual thing as I kind of was yeah. in church, learn about Jesus. It just became more and more real. There's definitely moments in my life where it's like, that was a big moment where yeah, I took a yeah, step. I would be the same. But my faith, I can't pick a point where it started. I just kind of grew as I knew more about God. Yeah. And I, I made a definite decision when we sort of started going to youth and Pete was sort of starting to chat with us about like living a faithful life, living a holy life, like baptism and stuff like that. And a couple of guys got baptised sort of straight away and, and got baptised together. And I remember saying, no, nah, I'm not just going to do it because they've done it. I want to do it when I feel like yeah. And I was 18 when I got baptised mm. in water. I was 17. Yeah. And yeah. I just, and it was just, it wasn't anything like, well, I'm 18 now, I should just go and do it. It was the fact that I felt that God had said, you know, like, well, let's look, let's look at what I've done for you. Let's mm. look at what's been given. Like, you know, I'd had the car, the truck accident. Or I'd, you know, had a few other health issues and stuff like that. And he'd always brought me through it. And I just, at, a, at that point in time, at, at, at that age, I just sort of went, you know what? Yeah, like I want to live my life ha- according to you and got baptised and a whole heap of roadblock things come up, bad choices, you know, what happens when you do something right for God and, you know, you always wish that you'd, oh, I wish I'd never done that, but it's life and and sort of probably 
the, yeah, just small steps and then 21, turning 21 and making a decision that, no, I need to straighten out, I need to make sure that I'm doing the right thing. And then, yeah, gradually over time it's just gotten stronger and stronger. Yeah. And so we start as a kid coming to church. Now you've got kids, yeah. they're in church. Uh, if you're here on a Sunday, you see Jez, he could be making coffee, he could be doing the sand, he could be lifting 29 chairs on his <laughs> shoulders. Uh, he's a big man. Um, you know, a lot of people think faith is just rocking up to church, but it's so much more than that. It's like a daily oh, yeah. relationship with Jesus. Yeah. What does your faith, give us a snapshot or try and give us a, a yeah, a really a snapshot, what your faith looks like in a day to day? Uh, yeah, well, yeah, uh, so I'm probably, I'm not, uh, I'm not the one that you'll find sort of meditating down on the beach with my Bible or, <laughs> or you know. It's um, a bit cold for that. Having a, having a long walk along the, along the road or something like that and, you know, you probably won't find me, um, you know, wearing a path in the church here, praying and, and you know, singing and stuff like that. I, I'm sort of one of those ones where I, I don't, I don't. The only way I can probably explain it is that I just got, I've still got that childlike trust in God. I just, you know, like, yep, she'll be right. You know, like diabetes. I was so worried. We were so scared, Jessica and I, just dating. And I just came, we went to a camp and I was asking her, like, whether I could eat mashed potatoes and peas, like, you know. <laughs> but I just felt at that camp, God just sort of said, you need to go back and grab that childlike trust in me, that faith, like just that childlike faith that I'm always going to come through for you. And I've, ever since, yeah, I've just, that's what I've been running with ever since. Just like, you know what? This sucks, but God's going to be faithful to me because he always has and it says it in the Bible. And so a day for me is, yeah, like, I don't sort of really set time aside to pray and Jess will probably laugh because she'll say, well, yeah. I pray with my kids, we pray over tea. But for me personally, I just start the day in my car, driving to work, I'll listen to some music, I'll be chatting away, just talking to God, and I just sort of keep it as an open conversation throughout the day. Thoughts in my head, um, you know, flicking on my, my phone to, I've got that little thing where it reads an American voice, the Bible to you, and I'll just pick something and I'll just chuck it on and I'll read it and listen to it and then sort of dwell on it. And, yeah, like, I suppose it's just... The things that we make, the, the lives that we have can be quite busy and we need to fit... We need to fit our lives in around our time with God. And sometimes it can just be trusting him unconditionally and letting our our faith in him be that, hey, I know know my finances aren't great, but I'm going to trust you regardless. Like, sort of like what your kids do with you, you know. They just know that you're dad. They know that you're going to look after them. They know that you love them. And they've got, you can tell them off one minute and they'll be sitting on your lap having cuddles next, like, it doesn't matter, you're dad. I think that's what a lifetime of faith does. You build that. Because knowing God is a journey, mm. isn't it? Oh, yeah, definitely. It's like when we were kids growing up. We get to that point because we learn more about God. Yep. We, know, we learn about his character. It's like when you first meet someone. You oh, learn about him over yeah. time. And, that's, and over a lifetime, as you, as you follow God, as you learn about him, you can build that yep. trust. And so some days you've got time to sit down and read and pray. Sometimes, yeah, sometimes uh, the kids yeah. wake up and they've all pooed, <laughs> yeah. everything's wet, they won't eat oh. anything, everyone's crying, and, tri- and it doesn't happen. The trifecta. The because you know God and, and, and you've got the foundation, it's okay. Yeah. And, and that's, that's a lifetime. And, and faith is so practical, isn't it? Because it oh. helps in those times. It helps the that's finances, right. the work, the family. Well, thanks, Jez. No thanks for sharing. Thanks for being open. Cool. It's a good chat. Cheers, mate.